Okay, so now we've looked at three different ways to use synthetic division to find the answers to specific questions, right? First, we were able to, to see, use something called the remainder theorem, right? And that tells you that f of x is equal to the remainder, whatever you get with left over the remainder after you do synthetic division with a specific number. Then we were asked to see is an, a, a specific binomial a factor, right? So x plus a is a factor, right? Well, I might as well use k since that's what they keep using. x, minus, x plus k is a factor. And that's only if the remainder equals 0. And the third one is they were asking is a certain number a 0? of a polynomial. And so they'll give you some k, and again, that's only yes or no if the remainder equals 0. Yes if the remainder equals 0, no if it, if it doesn't. So we looked at those three in the synthetic divisions uh, part, and they're going to start this section off by doing these, looking at these two again. So let's talk a little bit more about those just to remind you, and so we know exactly what it is that we're looking at. Okay, so the first one, let's talk about asking ourselves, is something a factor? Okay. It's only a factor if after you plug in your k, then you get x equals 0. So the first thing is to find our k. Remember, these are going to be given to you in the form of x plus k. So we're going to have to pull our k away from our x. So what that does, if you'll remember, is that always changes the sign. So if it looks positive, it'll be negative. If it looks negative, you use positive. Okay. Then we'll just do the synthetic division. Make sure you watch out for those missing terms and really watch your signs here. If the remainder equals 0, then your answer is yes, it is a factor. If it doesn't equal 0, means it equals anything else, then no. So it's really cut and dry, really clear, as long as you've done your synthetic division properly, whether or not something is a factor. Okay. The next question is, they want to know, is something a 0 of a polynomial? And same process for that as, as well. Okay. Now, in this one, they're usually going to give you k, right? So they'll just give you some number to test and ask you, is it a zero? Zero is another word for solution. Okay? And what's happening is, and you'll see this in a, in a moment in another, in another question, is that the zeros are these places where the line, if you graphed it, is crossing the x-axis. Those are called the zeros. They're places where x equals zero. So that means you're on that x-axis, right? So that's one, one reason why they're called zeros. And again, you're just going to use synthetic division with your k. And again, remember, don't change the sign if it's just plain k. If it's x minus k or x plus k, you change the sign. And then yes, if the remainder equals zero. No, if the remainder is not zero. Okay? So it's really easy to find the zeros to find out if a number is a specific zero. And it's also easy to find out if a, if a binomial is a specific factor. So what we're going to do is we're going to look first at a couple of problems where they're asking us, is it a factor? Is it a zero? Then they're going to ask us to actually find all of the zeros of a polynomial. We'll talk about that and uh, how you can use uh, my lab and mastering to really help you out here. That doesn't get you off the hook. You have to know what you're doing, but uh, multiple choice is your friend in this particular instance. And then we're going to be able to factor polynomials using that information, as well as later be able to do some graphing in another section. So let's go straight to the homework. And first, look at these questions that are similar to the ones that uh, we did the last time. Okay? All right. 
right, so you'll see we have a function, and it says use the factor theorem and synthetic division. Oops, sorry about that to decide whether the second polynomial is a factor of the first, so that means we're just going to use synthetic division, plugging in our numbers. So to do the synthetic division, first we need our k, and it looks like positive 6, so that means we'll put negative 6 in the box. Look for missing terms, x to the third, x squared, 9x, negative 18, so no x, so it's x to the third, x squared, x, and a number, so no missing terms. So positive 1, because there is no number in front of x squared, positive 8, positive 9, negative 18. Skip a line and draw a line. Remember that first term always just comes straight down. 1 times negative 6 is negative 6, plus 8 is positive 2. Positive 2 times negative 6 is negative 12. Minus 9 is negative 3. Negative 3 times negative 6 is positive 18. And 18 minus 18 gives you 0. That last number is your remainder, and since your remainder is zero, that means that the answer to this question is yes, it is a factor. And that's the way all of these work. The synthetic division, being able to test is it a zero or is it a factor, always works exactly the same way. Okay? Now, so... Let's answer that question and then move on. So click yes, and off you go. All right? Now, factor theorem and synthetic division. So again, exactly the same process there. Factor theorem and synthetic division, same process. Watch your signs. If it doesn't have a number in front but it has a minus, that means it's a negative 1 in front, right? So they're going to mess with you with signs. Use the factor theorem and, st and synthetic division. Oh, they're being really nice to you. Okay, now, this one is a little different. They want you to actually factor it into linear factors, given that k is a 0 of f of x. Well, if k is a 0, then that means that x minus k is a factor. Okay, so let's get that down, and then we'll talk about how to finish this off. Because I'm going to show you a little trick if your factoring is not... Uh, strong, but we need to make sure that uh, you can really get the answers one way or another, okay? So, let's go to our writing mode. First thing we want to do is we want to do the synthetic division using the k that they give you. All right? And again, it's not x minus k, x plus k right now, so it's just the k. So Because we know that this one is a 0 because they told you it's a 0, right? So we know it's going to work. And what's going to happen is, if you remember the answers from synthetic division, once you do synthetic division once, and you get something that works, by the way, then what it does is it pulls this first term down one degree. So in other words, it goes from 4x to the third, and it's going to drop your new answer at the bottom. is going to become uh, something x to the second. 4x to the second, it's always going to be the same number. And then after that, if it's x to the second, then it's easy to factor, either using your um, rules for factoring polynomials, if you're lucky enough to know them. If you're not, then you can use the quadratic formula to find these as well. Either way, it makes no difference to me. I'm going to show you how using the quadratic formula, simply because if you don't know how to factor, you're not likely to learn in the time that it takes for you to finish this course. And you have to have some way to do it. Okay, So I'll show you use, uh, the, a method using the quadratic formula. It will allow you to factor just about any polynomial, uh, three terms or two terms anyway, So, which is what you're going to have in these. So first do synthetic division using k. Then factor the result. Now, <clears throat> again, that means the thing that's at the bottom underneath the underneath your line, right? You're gonna get you're gonna get to put those x's back in this time. We're not interested in a yes or no answer this time. I need all of the zeros. So factor the result. Okay? 
Then put a, your original K with an X. And remember what happens when you put something with an X or take something away, it's going to change the sign. So be really careful and watch for that sign. Okay? When you do that, you're going to get a series of parentheses. And those parentheses are the factors. Okay? You'll factor some of them from, you'll just do the factoring, and then you'll put the K with an X and that'll give you the other factor. So they're always going to give you one of the factors anyway. All right? This is a critical skill, so make sure that you pay attention in how to do this because this will be big on the test and it will be something that you're going to be asked to do throughout the rest of this chapter. Okay? So let's look at this particular one and I'll show you how to make it work. Okay? So, here we go. So we have our number. We know that our, that our, our k is 2 and it's just plain old k so we, just, so we don't change the sign x to the third, x squared, x and 70, so no missing terms, so let's just put them in. Positive 4, positive 15, negative 81, positive 70. Now I know this is going to work and give me a zero here, because they told me that it's a zero. But what I need to do is find out all these other numbers. Remember the first term just comes down. 4 times 2 is 8, right? 8 and 15 give me positive 23. 23 times 2 gives me right, 46, negative 81, minus, I'm sorry, plus 46 gives me negative 35, and negative 35 times 2 is negative 70, and 70 minus 70 makes 0. So that's our remainder. We don't need that. What we need is all of this stuff on this side that we can now factor. okay? But before we can factor it, we need to put our x's back in. Remember, it had x's up here, it doesn't down here, so we've got to put them back in. And it's going to be one degree less, so that's going to be x to the second, that's going to be x, and then 30 and minus 35. Okay? Now we have something that we can factor. And again, you can factor it using your factoring rules, if you know the AC method or FOIL, or you can factor, you can also factor using the quadratic formula, which is what I'm going to show you how to do now. I'm going to warn you that the numbers can get very large when you do this, but it's a method that works 100% of the time if you don't know how to factor properly. So sometimes we just have to do what we have to do. Okay? So let's go to a clean page so that I can get those. So say that we have, again, 4x squared plus 23x's minus 35. And remember, in the quadratic formula, we first have to list our a, b, and c. Remember, we looked at this in our very first chapter using the quadratic formula. And since they're in order, just put the numbers in order. Right? First number, second number, third number, a, b, c. As long as these are in as x squared, x, and then the number, which they always are because of synthetic division. Now we'll put those into the formula. x equals the opposite of our b plus and minus the square root of our b, oops, our b squared minus 4 times our a times our c. That's a little messy. All over 2 times our a, which is 4. Now, a lot of stuff going on underneath that radical, so don't try to do it all at one spot. Make sure you take it off to the side and, fit and work that out so that you don't mess that up. This is the, the most common area where you make a mistake if you're going to use this method. Okay, so the first thing we run into is this 23 squared business. 23 times 23, if you multiply that times itself, it gives you 529. Okay, Remember, we're still under the radical. Then we need to multiply these three things together. Be careful and don't forget that sign of the, of the negative 4, right? So it's simply negative 4 times positive 4 times negative 35. 
Make sure you're very careful when you're putting those signs in because if you don't, um, you're going to get the wrong answer and it's not a good thing. Okay, so it gives you positive 560. All right, now we simply need to add those two things together, right, because there's a plus between them. And that gives us the square root of 1089. And I know the numbers look huge, but they're going to they're going to go away in a minute. It's not going to they're not going to be huge in a minute. Okay? So just take the square root of that number. And that square root is 33. Now that I know the square root, that replaces all of this, right? So that, we did all of that, we're simply going to replace that with the 33 that we just got. Okay, so. The, the minus b part did not change, the plus and minus didn't change. We simplified that radical gives us 33, and in the bottom, 2 times 4 is 8. Okay, now, we just have to remember that this is plus and minus when they're stacked like that. So we're just going to do the math with the plus, then we'll do the math with the minus, and it'll give us our two, our two zeros, our two solutions. Okay? All right, so it's negative 23 plus and minus 33 all divided by 8. So first, negative 23 plus 33 divided by 8 gives us 10 over 8, which reduces to 5 halves, okay? Now, then we'll do negative 23 minus 33 divided by 8, which gives us negative 56 over 8, and of course, that will simply divide out to make negative 7 when you divide a negative 56 by an 8. Okay. Do not be tempted to change that fraction into a decimal. It will not work when you're factoring. Okay. Now, we've got two different numbers here, and each one of these is, we know, because we worked it out with using the quadratic formula, we know that these are zeros. Well, if they are zeros, then x minus them is a factor. So we know that our k was 2, and it was one of the zeros. So our list of zeros is positive 2, positive 5 halves, and negative 7. Well, if those are our zeros, then x minus those numbers, in other words, x and then change the sign, will give us the factors. That's what those notes meant earlier. So now we're going to put it into practice. Okay, so again, remember, we have 2, we have 5 halves, and we have negative 7. So it's going to be x minus 2, x minus 5 halves. There's something wrong with that, but I'll tell you in a minute. And then x plus 7. Okay, and this is the factored form almost. That fraction is going to cause you some trouble, okay? We can't leave fractions in factors. My math lab simply won't accept that as an answer, so we're going to have to fix it. But all you have to do is fix it by doing the opposite. So remember, this says divide by 2. So what we're going to do is multiply by 2. And what that does is it has the effect of simply taking that 2 and putting it in front of the x. Okay? So here's what it looks like. x minus 2 won't change because it didn't have a fraction. That 2 is going to move in front of the x, and that will become 2x minus 5. And then the last factor is x plus 7. If you don't understand what I've done there, it's the same as clearing the fractions from an equation, right? So we have to clear these fractions. We have this as divide by 2. Well, the opposite of divide by 2 is multiply by 2. So what I did was I simply took every one of those terms, all three of them, and multiplied them by 2. 
There, 2 times x is 2x. Here, the 2's will divide away. gives me negative 5. And 2 times 0 is 0. But I only want the factor, right? Because it really didn't equal 0 in the beginning. I'm just showing you how this is how this is kind of happening. We're clearing the fractions. And all it does is move it in front of the, in front of the number. So it doesn't matter what the fraction is. Don't make this hard on yourself. So if, say you have x minus 1 half. That's going to lead to 2x minus 1. It just moves whatever the denominator is in front of the x. Okay? As long as you can do that, it doesn't, know that it doesn't uh, really matter that you can't explain it. So x plus 2 thirds, for example, simply going to move that 3 in front of the x and become 3x plus 2. Okay? And those two are exactly the same factors, but without the fractions because my math lab won't let you enter the fractions. Okay? So, let's see. So we ended up with x minus 2. 2x, oops, I've forgotten, 2x minus 5 and x plus 7. And those are our factors, so that's what we're going to, that's what we're going to type in. Now, I'm not going to type it in. Instead, I'm going to let Course Compass show you what that looks like when you type it in, because you know me and my parentheses for some reason. All right, so there it is. There's the factored form. Now, because I showed completed problem, it used different numbers. So our answer doesn't match the one we just worked because they gave us a new problem because I clicked on show completed problem so you can see how to type the answer in. But you just type it in using parentheses. Notice that middle one, 4x minus 5, that tells you that that originally was x minus 5 over 4. And they've just pulled that 4 in front of the x to clear the fraction. Okay? Now, it may seem bizarre to you to use the quadratic formula to factor. And you don't have to, right? But you need to pass college algebra. And the only way to do that is to be able to factor somehow. <laughs> so I'm giving you an alternative to learning all those factoring rules. Um, my colleagues would probably kill me if they saw me doing this. But it does work. So if you are indeed one of those people who are having trouble with college algebra because you don't factor, this is a way to overcome that so that you can get past college algebra. If you're going to become an engineer, uh, then you better learn how to factor. Okay? All right, let's look at some more. Okay. Here, given negative 4 is a 0 of f of x, that simply means we're going to plug it in and do this in synthetic division, right? And then you see they give you the answer. So let's take that the answers away so that we can work this problem from start to finish. There we go. So we're going to, we know that negative 9 is a 0, right? I've changed the problem. And we don't have any missing terms. So it's positive 3x plus 7x squared minus 155. I don't know why they love these big numbers on these, but you've got a calculator. You can make it work. Okay. Now, let's do our first, do our synthetic division with our negative 9, because we know that's a 0. So 3 times negative 9 is negative 27. Negative 27 times... Oh, I'm going to have to use my calculator now, guys. So... Negative 27 times negative 9 is positive 243 plus that 7 gives us positive 250 times negative 9 gives us negative 2250. <laughs> Fun. Okay. Minus 155 equals 2450. And I've made a mistake somewhere because that can't possibly happen because we've got to get a zero there. Did I write down one of the numbers wrong? Positive 3, positive 7, negative 155, negative negative 9 is a zero. Okay, let's go back here. 9 times 3 gave us... <laughs> 
it was nope 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 that's negative okay so 27 times 9 is 243 plus 7 250 times 9 2250 times 9 20, that's getting way too big so somewhere I'm making a hideous mistake let's try this again <laughs> sorry kids negative 9 is a 0 so negative 9 goes in the box. We don't have any missing terms. So it's 3x plus 7x squared minus 125 minus 225. Oh, it's making all those strokes on there. So positive 3. Positive 7 minus 155 plus 225. Okay, positive 3. Three times that gives us negative 27. I think that's where I made my mistake, right? So that gives us negative 20. Uh, sometimes you really just have to start over so that you can see where you uh, where you screwed up. All right, which gives us 20 times 9, which is negative 180, positive 180, because negative times a negative is a positive. And 180 minus 155 is positive 25 times negative 9, gives us negative 225, which gives us 0. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Get used to it. All right. Now, what we've done is we've done our synthetic division with our first zero. So now what we need to do is we need to put our x's back into here. And remember, it's going to be one degree less than our original. And now we need to take that piece and factor it, right? Factor it into linear factors. So it's 3x squared minus 20x plus 25. properly. I'm not believing anything I do now. All right, and you can factor this using the regular rules for trinomials, FOIL, AC method, whichever process that you know, if you know it. Or you can use the quadratic formula to find the zeros and then get the factors that way. I don't care. I'm going to show you using the quadratic formula because so many people don't know how to factor. Okay. And you cannot pass college algebra without knowing the quadratic formula, so it's not going to kill you to use it more. All right, so there we is. There's our opposite of b. Then we take our b and square it. Minus 4 times our a, which is 3, times our c, which is 25, all over 2 times our a, which is 3. Again, take the... Take the radical off to the side to do it. Don't try to do it all in one spot. So the first thing is take our 20 and square it, which just means 20 times 20, which of course is 400. Then we'll take these three things and multiply them together. So it's 4 times 3 times 25, which gives us 300. And it was a negative times a positive times a positive, so that's negative 300. Sometimes they're nice to you with the numbers because the square root of 100 is really, really easy. The square root of 100 is just 10, right? So this minus in front of that minus turns that into a positive. Plus and minus. We did the square root of 100 is 10. That's all over 2 times 3 in the bottom, which makes 6. So remember, these pl stack plus and minus means you have an addition and a subtraction. So that's really two different things going on there. We need to do them both. So it's going to be 20 plus 10 and 20 minus 10. So 20 plus 10 divided by 6 and 20 minus 10 divided by 6. 
Well, 20 plus 10 is 30 divided by 6, which gives you a 0 of 5. 20 minus 10 gives you 10 over 6, oops, that's a little much like a 10, which will reduce to 5 thirds. So we get a fraction, don't worry about it, right? So our zeros, our original zero of negative 9, our next zero of 5, and then finally the last zero is 5 thirds. Now we've got to put those with an x, and putting them with an x has the same effect as changing the signs. So it's going to be x plus 9, x minus 5, and because we don't want that fraction in there, remember it would be x minus 5 thirds, but that's not acceptable. We're going to move that 3 in front of the x and make it 3x minus 5. Now, you could have typed them in a different order. That makes absolutely no difference. Just as long as you get all three of them, you're fine. Okay? So this time I'll actually type them in for you so that way it doesn't change the problem. Just give me a minute. All right? Let's see. So it was oops, x plus 9. That's in parentheses. That's where that 9 came from. I'm going to spend my entire time typing this in. Okay. And then the next one. Well, great. Can't get back to what I had already done. So, I've forgotten what the factors were. Uh, X minus 5. Close parentheses. Oops, not typing. Don't forget it. Let me just show you what they look like when you complete them. <laughs> trying to do this on two different screens. You'd, you'd understand if you were here looking. So here's, here's what the factored form will look like. Obviously, when I clicked on show a completed problem, it changed the question, and so it's different numbers than you got originally. But you can see how they type them in. Just three sets of parentheses with your factors inside. And see that, notice that middle one, 2x minus 3? That means they had three halves, but they had to clear that fraction. Okay? So give those a shot. Email me if you need me to redo something on this video. I will be happy to. <laughs> okay. Let's see what they do next. Okay. Linear factors, given the negative fours of factors. So same exact process. Sorry, that's taking a while. Okay, factor into linear factors, giving the k is a 0. Now look at this one. It says k is negative 2, multiplicity 2. So what that means is that k is not only negative 2 once, it's negative 2 twice. Multiplicity of, multiplicity of 2 means that it occurs twice. And if you notice, this is x to the fourth. So what you're going to have to do is, you're going to have to do this synthetic division twice because the only way the quadratic formula would work is to get that down to x to the second right so that means we're going to have to pull it down twice but that's okay because we were given two of our zeros okay so just plug in the negative two do the synthetic division and then once you get your number out your answer on the bottom here then you're going to plug in negative two again and do the synthetic division again with negative 2 a second time. Okay? And that's going to give you, when you write out the factors, because it occurred twice, it'll give you x plus 2 in parentheses squared, because, then, because this number occurred twice. And this part is going to happen to you anytime you get a number that occurs twice. You could, get a, you could theoretically get a number that occurs twice when you do the factoring, but usually it occurs twice because they gave it to you twice, all right? But other than that, the process doesn't change. It stays the same, okay? So let's look at what else. The mathematics doesn't change. Just pay attention to the fact that they give that same number to you twice. Factor the polynomial, list all the possible zeros, etc. Okay, 
So here's the big one. All right, let's get rid of the answers. So what you need to know about this particular problem is that if you see, they give you a function, right? So they're giving you the function, but they're not giving you any k is a zero. So there's no starting point. And if you tried to factor this, even if you know how to factor these things, if you tried to factor this, you'd find that it wouldn't factor. So the, the way it is. So what we have to do is we have to be able to get at least one of the zeros so that we can get this down to an x squared. Okay. So let's go through the process for doing this. And it's very easy to know what you're going to be doing because they tell you the steps in order. Okay? The first thing you need to do is list all possible rational zeros. Now, this is something that you're not going to want to do. You're going to want to just pull this list off of mul the multiple choice choices that they've given you. And pulling it off the list is not going to help you later when you start making these, uh, doing these, some more problems later that are a little more complex, where they give you even less information, because they're not always going to give you this nice, easy list of answers to choose from, okay? It's going to be one of these lists, I guarantee, I'll grant you that, but do not just pull it off one of these lists and think that you've gotten the answer, okay? I am, however, going to show you how to use these lists to get the answers later, It'll, uh, and, or at least check your answers. It makes your life a lot easier than if you didn't have the list, okay? So first thing we want to do is we want to find out how to list all possible rational zeros. Now this is really easy to do. But you've got to make sure you get them all, and you've got to make sure you make the list. If you're just clicking on an answer because it looks like the answer, I can't help you later. All right? If you don't want to do it right cor correctly from the beginning, then you're going to have trouble later. Okay? So don't just click on the right answer because it looks right. Make sure you understand why it's the right answer because you're going to have to find it later without these multiple choice lists. Okay? So to list all the possible rational zeros, rat zeros, rational zeros. So that means anything that would make these turn into zero. What we're going to do, it's an easy process that involves a lot of fractions, so you're going to hate it. But don't worry about it. You don't have to worry about fractions. Just worry about making a list, right? All we're doing is the list, so there's very little math involved here. First, what we're going to do is list all factors of the number term. Remember the terms are the pieces that make up the, the, the polynomial there, and the number term is the one that's just a plain old number. So in this case, it's negative 35. But don't worry about the negative part, just worry about the 35. So in this case, it's 35. Okay. Now I'm going to need more space, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this problem onto a blank sheet of paper so that I can work it out and have more room to show you the completed problem and the notes as we go. Okay, so hold on just one second. Get a piece of paper. So, our original was x to the third minus x squared minus 37 x's minus 35. So our number term is 35. So we're going to list everything that will divide evenly into 35. Now, my advice is to take these in order. If you get used to thinking mathematically, and if you were thinking mathematically, that means think numbers, and numbers always come in numerical order, just like the alphabet always comes in order. You could say the alphabet if you didn't put it in order, maybe, but I doubt it. So get used to the th process of putting things in numerical order. So when we're listing all of the factors, we always start with 1 in the number itself. And the reason they're factors is because if you multiply 1 times 35, you get 35, right? 2 won't go into it, right? 3 won't go into it, 4 won't, 
five will exactly seven times. So you just see the two numbers that you that you're listing will multiply to give you thirty-five. Six won't go into it, and I don't need to try seven because it's already here on my list, right? Seven would be the next number after six, but I don't care because it's already on my list. That's how you know when to stop looking for factors. If you go in numerical order, that will happen to you every single time. Now, so first, oops, let me get out of the red. Good luck. First, list the factors of the number term. Second, we want the factors of the leading coefficient. Now again, I'm using fancy math words, but the leading coefficient just means the number in front of this first term. So, in the and in many cases, it's going to be 1, but it doesn't have to be 1, right? In this particular case, there is no number, so we assume it to be positive 1. Well, positive 1 only has one factor itself. It's a special case. Now, what we're going to do, and there's no math here. Don't get carried away, right? We're simply going to put... list 1 on top of list 2. Okay? All right, so the first number up here was a 1, and this number down here is a 1, which gives us 1 over 1, which is 1. Okay? So the first number we have is 1. We don't have any more numbers to put it on top of. If there were more numbers down here, we'd do that over and over and over again until we've used it up. And you'll look what, see what that means. The next number is 5. If you put 5 over 1, you get 5. Now notice I've left a little space between those two numbers, and you'll see why in a second. The next number in numerical order is 7. So 7 over 1, right, I'm just putting them over this number. 7 over 1 is 7. The next number is 35. 35 over 1 is 35. Okay. Then, our next thing is, we want both, every possibility, so we want plus and minus for every one of these. So it's positive 1 and negative 1. Positive 5 and negative 5. Positive 7, negative 7. Positive 35, negative 35. So you just go back and put plus and minus in front of them. And you might be tempted to say that means that there are four possible zeros, but in reality, there are eight possible zeros. Okay? You see that? Because of the pluses and minuses, that gives us eight possible zeros. Okay? That's a plus one up there. I shouldn't have written it in red. Okay? Now, this one was an easy one because we love it when that first term is a positive 1 because all you really get is this list over again in order, right? Not always going to happen, so do it properly and list them all. Save yourself some headache later so that you'll know what you're doing, okay? Now, we have our list, so now we just need to see which one it, which one it is. Anytime we're listing all possible rational zeros, we can automatically get rid of any list that doesn't have those pluses and minuses in front. Because every time you do this, you're going to have that plus and minus every single term. Okay? And then we can look at the ones that are remaining, so it's a lot many times easier to, uh, to get rid of what you don't need, and find the one that we need. And we know, in our case, that's A. Now what's missing here is that plus or minus 35 business. That's not in this last one. And so we know that's not the correct answer. Okay? And that's usually what they're going to do to you. We knew that there were going to be four of them with their pluses and minuses. So in other words, there were going to be eight of them. And the reason we knew that, ah, uh, well, no, I'm not even going to mess with that because... It gets more complicated as we go. Let's let's ignore that. <laughs> no sense gilding the lily. Okay, here we go. So there's our there are our list of factors. So let's and click on our A. 
check our answer. Now, don't just pick the longest one. <laughs> it's not going to do you any good. I know how to make those, those things work. Now, here's where we can use some information that we know and some stuff that we get from my map lab and make our life a lot easier. Okay? Because the next thing they ask us to do is they want us to determine the rational zeros. So this, what we're doing, is we're finding the actual zeros. We're not talking about possible zeros. We have a list of possible zeros. Now we need to pull that down to the list of actual zeros. And we can eliminate two of our answers immediately. And then use my math lab and the multiple choice in here, and it'll be just like this on a test, so don't freak, then we'll use the same thing to be able to find, to test this very quickly using synthetic division, all right? So our actual zeros. First of all, we know that our highest exponent, if you look at the highest exponent in, our, in your original, that'll tell you how many actual zeros there are. And the highest exponent here is a 3, right? So if that is the number of zeros. So since the highest exponent here right, is a 3, x to the third, then, so that means the degree of that polynomial is 3, then 3 zeros. So right away, we know that D and A will not work because D has too many zeros and A has too few. All right? So just whatever the highest exponent tells you the, the number of zeros. Now we have two lists. We have C and we have B. And if you'll notice, the only difference between those two lists is that they've changed. one of them has the opposite signs of the others. So what we're going to do is test one using synthetic division. And remember, it's, we're testing to see if it's a zero, right? So do we get a remainder of zero? Which is exactly what we've been doing in the past, right? If we do, then that's the list we want. If we don't, we want the other list, okay? Now, if you use the Help Me Solve This feature in, in uh, my math lab, it will take you through what I used to teach, which takes about 45 minutes for every single problem. But we have a list. Let's just use the stuff at our disposal and use it. Okay? So let's go to a blank page so we can test it. So we knew, again, that A and D can't happen. One has too few answers. One has too many. So let's just test here. I'm testing that one, and it doesn't matter which one of those zeros you pick. If they work, if one of them works, they all work. If one of them doesn't work, none of them will work. And I always pick the one with the positive one to test because working with positive one is easier than working with negative one because I make sign errors. You might have noticed. Okay, so we're going to put positive one in the box. Then we'll list our factors from our function. All we're doing is plain synthetic division. And we're going to see if that 1 works. Works means that I get a 0 there, okay, as a remainder. So bring down your positive 1. Positive 1 times positive 1 is positive 1, which gives you 0. 0 times 1 is 0. Negative 37 minus 0 is negative 37 times 1 is negative 37. And that is not going to give you 0, is it? Okay? So that tells you that that list will not work, okay? which means that that one is your answer. And I'll prove it to you if you want me to real quickly. Let's just go to another page and test one of those. And again, the easiest one to test is the 1. So positive 1 minus 1 minus 37 minus 35. Bring down your 1. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1, which gives you negative 2 times 1 is positive 2, which gives you negative 35. Negative 35 times negative 1 is positive 35. And 35 minus 35 gives you the 0 you wanted. 
Now we could use the quadratic formula or factoring to find the other two zeros by from this, right? Because that's now x squared, 1x squared minus 2x minus 35. But we don't have to because we already eliminated the other choices. B is our only option. So this is one place where my math lab is definitely your friend. Okay, All you have to do is eliminate the ones you didn't need because of the exponent and then test the others. Okay, Now what we need to do is find the factored form. Right? Well, I already know the zeros, right? Remember the zeros are right there. So if the zeros are negative 1, negative 5, 7, now these aren't the possible zeros, these are the actual zeros, right? So no, don't go back to this list. Those are the possible ones. It's the actual ones we want. And all we have to do is be able to put them in. Now, here it says use integers or fraction for any numbers in the expression. So this one, they're going to let you use the fractions, which is very unusual. I would not use the fractions and get in the habit of clearing them because they're not going to let that continue. Remember, we're going to put them with our x's, which is going to change the signs. So it's going to be x plus 1, x plus 5, and x minus 7. And unlike the others where you got to use multiple choice, these you're actually going to have to type in but you know that I can't seem to make that work for some reason, so I'm not even going to bother. But you have to. Okay? Now, so we found all the possible rational zeros, we found the actual rational zeros, and then we factored it. Easy. Okay? Weird. Odd. And you're not going to understand why you're doing it, but it's a, it's a tool. You're learning how to use a hammer right now, and later we'll teach you how to build something. Okay, so just remember, these are tools that you're using. Oops. Yes, I want to leave this problem because I know I've got it right. Okay. <clears throat> and you're just going to continue to do that. Make sure that you're really careful about listing all of those factors. And don't just click on the one with the most numbers, even though it's the right one. Because if you don't know how to find the zeros, are the, all the possible zeros, then you will get into trouble later. So make sure you're listing them. So 10 is pretty easy. That's pretty much like the one we just did. I want to find one that has some fractions in it. I know they're going to do it to you. Can you tell that I don't make these homework problems? Here we go. <laughs> you're going to love this one. Now, to find all the possible zeros, to find the actual zeros, and to find the factors, no problem. So the first thing we have to do, of course, though, is find all of the possible rational zeros, right? And you don't have to remember that because they ask you the questions in order. Now, later, after you've done it a couple of times, then you'll remember which, which thing you need to do first, then second, etc. And, and then you'll have to. But for now, they ask you every single question in order so you're in good shape. Okay? To determine those, the first thing we need to do is find all the factors of the number term. Remember, the number term is just that last thing. It's always The number is always at the end. And the number term in this case is 75. 1 goes into 75 75 times. 2 won't go into it. 3 goes into it 25 times. 4 won't go into it. But 5 will, right? 5 goes into it 15 times. Uh, 6 won't. 7 won't. 8 won't. 9 won't. 10 won't. 11 won't. And we finally end up with 15, right? So we know that once you get to this number that you already have on your list, then that's as far as you have to go, as long as you do it in order. So those are the three factors, right, of 75. The three, that's the list of factors. It's actually six, no, six factors, I'm sorry. But the three possible combinations. Now what we have to do is factor the leading coefficient. Okay, so if we're going to factor that leading coefficient, we have to know what it is first. And our leading coefficient is always the number in front of the first term. So in this case, the leading coefficient is 15. So 
15 is not a 1. So this isn't that easy one where you can just put the pluses and minuses in front of the list of the number of, of the number terms, right? That's not going to work this time. We, because if you look at 15, 1 goes into it 15 times, 2 won't go into it, but 3 goes into it 5 times, 4 won't go into it, and we don't need to try 5 because it's already on our list. Make sure you're going in numerical order. That always works. And what happens is we get a long list of factors of 15, right? And we're going to have to put everything from list 1 on top of everything from list 2 in order, every single one of them. So that means I'm going to first start with 1, and I'm going to put it on top of not just one of these, but all four of them. Okay? So it's got to go on top of all four of them. Now, I know that most of you already know which list it's going to be, and I hate this list because they don't put it in order, but that's okay. What we're going to do is we're going to take each one, but we're not going to repeat any. So in other words, remember the golden rule for fractions is that you always have to reduce them. So if it will reduce, then you don't need it. All right, and I'll show you what that, I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so here we go. First, again, our first number is 1. So we're going to put it over 1, okay? but 1 over 1 makes 1. That's always on your list, no matter what. Then it's 1, the next number is 3, so 1 over 3 makes 1 third. Yes, there will be fractions, there will be a lot of them. Then 1 over 5 makes 1 fifth. Then 1 over 15 makes 1 over 15. And there's the first part of our list. Now we've used this 1 four times, and there are four factors down here so that we know we're done with it. So we'll move to our next number, which is positive 3. Now, it doesn't take any mathematics skill to be able to do this, guys, so make sure you don't panic. 3 over 1 is just plain old 3. But 3 divided by 3, or 3 over 3, is 1. And notice 1 is already on our list, isn't it? So we don't need to write it down again. Just move to the next number, which is 5. So 3 over 5 gives me 3 over 5. 3 over 15, 3 and 15 will reduce to 1 fifth, and there it is. So anytime a number, will, a fraction will reduce, you don't need it. It's already going to be on your list. Okay? Now, and if you put it on there, and you can't find a list that matches yours, that's the reason, reason because this one will reduce to 1 fifth, so we don't need it. It's already on our list. Okay? Now, done with 3, now let's use 5. 5 over 1 is 5. 5 over 3 is 5 over 3. Didn't reduce, so we needed it. 5 over 5 is 1, so we don't need it. All right? And 5 over 15 will reduce so we, to 1 third, so we don't need that. Now let's go to 15. What you're going to see is when you have these big numbers like this, many times they start reducing out like crazy. 15 over 1 is 15. 15 divided by 3 is 5, which is on our list. 15 divided by 3 is 5 is 3, and 15 divided by itself is 1. So you see that 15 only gave us one number, 15. We'll do 25. 25 over 1 is 25. 25 over 3 is 25 over 3. They don't always reduce out. But 25 over 5 and 25 over 15, though, since they'll both divide by 5, that'll reduce, so we are done with that. And 75 over 1 gives us 75. 75 over 3 is 25, so we're, who cares? 75 divided by 5 divides out. 75 divided by 15 divides out. So there's that one. And now all you need in front of each one is a plus and minus. I'm warning you, if you don't do this on your own paper with your own brain, later you will not be able to complete the assignment. So even though they give, it, they give you that list somewhere on here, and I'm going to tell you a way to recognize it every single time, if you can't do it by hand, you're going to be in trouble later. Notice this biggest one. Okay, So this first one only has three. That's, there's not enough. This list, C, doesn't have the pluses and minuses, so we know it's not going to be. And what's always going to happen is they're always going to leave that off of the wrong list. So if you look here at B, there's no 75, plus or minus 75 on there. But there is on the D. 
So we, that is not our list. It doesn't have enough. It's got to have that 75 in there. And they always, the one they leave off, and you'll notice they're not in order. They put the fractions after the whole numbers because the whole numbers are easier to use first. So it doesn't matter, though. Okay, Just as long as you get the same number of pieces. Now, okay, so we have our list of possible rational zeros. Let's put that in and then... Right, we set it as D, and then see what they ask for next. Again, we don't have to think about what to do next because they tell us B, the next step, is to find the rational zeros. So these are the actual zeros. And now this is, that, this is one of those places where I'm going to let you use the multiple choice to make your life easier. First thing is, if you look at the highest exponent, the highest exponent up there is a 3, right? So that means this is a third degree. It should have three actual zeros. So two of these things are already off the list. C, because it doesn't have enough of them, and D, because it does too many. D is simply a list of all the possible zeros again. So what we have to do is we have two lists here that we need to check. And it doesn't matter which one you pick, and it doesn't matter which number you pick from the list. And I'm going to freak you out a little bit, and I'm going to pick one of those fractions. I'm going to use one-third. And the reason why is because I want to show you how easy it is to use a fraction. If you'll just remember what one-third means. One-third means one divided by three. Okay, So one multiplying times one-third really means divide by 3. Okay? Now, so here we go. Put in our numbers. 15. Hmm. Let me get rid of my mark so I can see the numbers. Okay. 379. Positive. Uh, positive 97. And negative 75. Big numbers. Who cares? Bring down your 15. 15 times 1 third. Now you can put that in your calculator and work it out all day long. Or if you remember, multiplying by 1 third is the same as just divide by 3, right? It's divide by 3, multiply by 1, so divide by 3 because multiply by 1 doesn't do any good. So we have 15 divided by 3, which simply gives us positive 5. Plus the 379 gives us 380. 384 divided by 3 gives us positive 128. Plus 97 gives us 225. 225 divided by 3 gives us 75. And 75 minus 75 gives us that magic zero that we wanted. Okay? Now, when you're working with fractions, you don't even have to get all this way to know if it doesn't work. Now, you do have to get all the way to zero to make sure it does work. But if any point one of these numbers did not divide by 3, then you know it's not going to work. Because it has to divide evenly or else it won't give you a 3 in the end. It'll give you some weird fraction. right? So, Or you can just test it. Make sure you're very careful about your signs, though. But this one did work. So that means that positive 1 third is an actual zero. So, positive one-third, <laughs> I've tested the only number that occurs on both lists. you got to be kidding me. Okay, so positive one-third is a zero, but it's on both lists. Sorry, I didn't think they ever did that to you. So, we knew it was going to be a zero because it's on both lists. It has to be. So, let's do another one. <laughs> uh, don't want to test negative three-fifths because if you'll notice, that's on both lists, right? So the only one to test is the 25. I want to test either negative 25 or positive 25. I'm sorry. I really should pay more attention. I am so glad I have my degree so I don't have teachers like me. Okay. So put in the 25. We get 15, 379, 97, and negative 75. Okay. And I can tell you this one's not going to work, but who cares? Just get your calculator, 
and start doing the numbers. Let's do, you can prove it to yourself. So first we'll take 15 times 25, which gives us 375, plus the 379, gives us 754, times the 25. Do you see what's happening here? Look how big those numbers are getting. Plus the 97. So that gives us 18,947 times 25 is going to give us way bigger number than 75, right? So that tells us that the positive 25 is not going to work because there is no way that huge number times that number is going to give us a number that, that gives us 75, right? So we know it can't be the positive 25. It has to be the negative one, right? So anytime those numbers start getting so huge that it couldn't possibly work, you can pretty much decide if you're, com if you're comfortable with that. If you're not, then continue it on. It's not that much work. Your calculator does all the math. There you go. Nice work. Okay. Now, if I have the zeros, it's easy to find the factored form. Okay? And, again, you're getting lucky here. They're telling you to use integers or fractions for any numbers in the expression. I'm not going to let you because if you do, what's going to happen is later they're not going to let you, so you might as well get out of the habit now. So here are our actual zeros of negative 25, positive one-third, negative three-fifths. So all we're going to do is put them back with our x's. Remember, we can't have fractions, but all that does is throw that number in front of the x, right? And remember, also change the sign. So that one was positive up there, so it's going to be negative 1 down there. So here, that's going to be 5x plus 3, right? Don't just move the number. Also remember to change the sign. And so that's your list of factors. Okay? And I'm not typing them in because you know what that'll look like when I try start trying. Okay, let's move forward and see what else they do. Yes, I want to move forward. Okay. Find all the zeros and their multiplicities. All right. Now, <clears throat> once you're, when you're finding all of the zeros and their multiplicities, if it's already in factored form, that's a very easy process to do. So, let's talk about it. First, to find the zeros when f of x is in factored form. And how do I know it's in factored form? Because of all those parentheses. If you look back to the ones we just did, every time we factored something, we put a bunch of stuff in parentheses. So notice here that our f of x is already in parentheses. All we have to do is solve that, right? So what we're going to do is simply set each factor equal to 0 and then solve. Now what I want you to do, though, is watch out for those multiplicities. That means it occurs more than one time, and some of them will. So be careful about when you're doing that. So for example, this one has x minus 5 raised to the third power. Now, that means there are really three parentheses of x to the minus 5. But I don't have to solve it three times because it's the same thing. I'll solve it once, but there are really three of the same answer over and over and over again. Okay. So make sure that you remember the multiplicities. Now the second part of this is x squared minus 7. Now that one is a squared inside. That doesn't mean you're going to get two of them. It means you're going to get two answers. It means you started off with a quadratic. So that means that you're going to have to, you're going to, have to, um, to solve a quadratic. Right? Now, let's start off with this one because it's easier. So it's x minus 5 equals 0. Right? Just set it equal to 0. And then to solve it, we just need to add the 5 to both sides, which gives us x equals 5. But again, that exponent of 3 says that we didn't get up just one 5. We got three of them. So it's 5 multiplicity, oops, that should be an L, 
multiplicity of 3. So that's our first thing. So 5, multiplicity of 3. So that's got to be D, which means the other one, that's the only one that, that'll work. But we're going to solve the other one anyway, because you need to remember how. So it's x squared minus 7. Let's just go to a blank screen. So x squared minus 7, set that equal to 0. This one is a quadratic equation. Now, you could solve it using the quadratic formula. Always solves any quadratic, no matter what. Or you can solve this one using the, that, um, because this one is just an x squared and a number. You could solve it in a different way. But So however you solve it, fine by me. If you are going to solve it using the quadratic formula, however, remember that a is the thing in front of the x squared, so it's 1. b is the thing in front of the plain old x, and there is no plain old x in this one. right? If there were, it would be in between there. So that means b is 0, and c is negative 7. Okay, So be careful. Watch out for missing terms. Now You should be used to looking for missing terms now, because you can't do synthetic division without looking for them. So this one has a missing term. So it's x equals the opposite of 0 plus or minus the square root of 0 squared minus 4 times our a times our c. Watch those signs. All over 2 times our a. Okay. Well, the opposite of 0 is 0. So we just get plus and minus. We don't get a number this time. 0 squared is 0. So all we have to do is multiply these things together. Negative 4 times negative 7 is positive 28. Okay. So that gives us the square root of 28 over 2. Don't you dare divide that 28 by 2. It is not correct. You can't divide a radicand by a number. It doesn't work that way. So, um, let's see. How do we want you to proceed here then? So, back in one of your review sessions, hopefully you remember this. If you don't, I'll try to explain it as best I can. And I can put, let's see, hopefully the, though you'll remember. If you're taking the square root of a number that's not a perfect square, you can factor it to find any perfect squares that are hiding in it. And the biggest perfect square that's hiding in this one is 28. Now I can take the square root of the 4, which is 2, but the 7 has to stay under. But don't forget this 2. It's got to be under there, which means those 2's are going to divide away, and that gives you plus and minus the square root of 7. Now, that should have been something that you did in the past, that in the, in the other sections, you've already learned how to take the square root of a number that is not a perfect square. Don't just put that into your calculator and get a decimal. It, it won't work here. We can't. You don't see any decimals in your answer in your answer choices. Now, luckily with this one, we could have, we could eliminate the other answers because that's the only one that has the multiplicity of five. But you really need to understand how to simplify these radicals. So you can go back to that chapter one, those review questions, and look at that simplifying radicals, or go to Khan Academy and watch a video, something, there'll be, there'll be something that'll show you how to make those work. Okay, now, so there is our answer. And again, we knew that because it was the only one that had positive five multiplicity of three, but that's not always gonna be the case where they give it to you so clearly. Okay, here we have it factored already. We know it's factored because all of the things are in parentheses, so, Let's look at how to solve this one. So we're just going to take each piece and set it equal to 0. So 4 equals 0, x minus 5 equals 0, and see there's a print of an exponent on that one. So I just put a little 5 up there, meaning, don't forget, that's a multiplicity of 5. 7x plus 2 equals 0, and then finally x squared minus 1 equals 0. Set each one equal to 0. Well, 4 equals 0 is garbage. 4 can't equal 0, not going to happen. So just get rid of it. If it's not true, it's not true in mathematics as well as anything else. Here, we just need to add 5 to both sides, which gives us 5 multiplicity of 5. Okay? So we know that can't be that one. 
can't be that one. Whoops. Can't be that one because of the four thing. Okay. So these have five multiplicity of five. So let's keep on. Here, we're going to subtract our two from both sides. Then we'll divide by seven. Right? Getting this solving the equation just means getting everything away from the x by doing the opposite. Gives us x equals negative two over seven. So, but if you look, they give you negative two over seven. So that's not going to do us any good. So we still have to solve the last one. And notice that it's a quadratic, right? x squared minus 1. So we got 5 multiplicity of 5. We get x equals negative 2 over 7. Now we got to solve this last one. And again, you can solve it using the quadratic formula as long as you remember that if there is no plain old x, that's a 1. I'm sorry, <laughs> that's a 0. Okay, so be careful. All right, so x equals the opposite of 0 plus or minus the square root of 0 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 1 all divided by 2 times our a which is 1 0 negative 0 who cares so we have plus and minus 0 squared who cares negative 4 times po negative 1 is positive 4 and the square root of 4 is 2 in the bottom we get 2 times 1 which is 2 so that gives us plus and minus 1, because 2 divided by 2 gives you 1. So plus and minus 1. So not two ones or two negative ones, but one positive one, one negative one. So it's not multiplicity of 2, it's that one. So just go through and solve each piece. And every, in this one, we had to solve each piece before we could finally get down to our answer. Okay? All right, let's look at number. There we go. All right, find a polynomial of degree 3 with real coefficients and zeros, okay, in which f of negative 2 equals negative 30. Now, this one looks a little more complicated, but it's really not if we know that f of x equals negative 30, f of ne negative 2, I'm sorry, equals negative 30 has to be in there. And we alre also already know that if they're um, the coefficients are real, we're not going to get any imaginary numbers, then these are real zeros, right? And we can put those real zeros in as factors and then just multiply it out and build our polynomial there, okay? Now at the end, we are going to have to solve it to get that negative 30 business in, uh, added in. So let's look at what I mean. So if, in place of f of x, I'm going to put negative 30. Right? Because here's s of x. So negative 30. Okay? And then we're going to continue from there by putting in all of the factors. Well, hold on a minute. I'm putting the cart before the horse. Let's just build the function first. And then we'll put in the 30 part. Now, <clears throat> remember all ago we had that 4 in front, of our, in front of our factors. There's always a number in front of your factors even if you don't know what it is. So we're going to put a as that unknown number, okay? So first, a as your unknown coefficient. Just put it out in front of a, a bracket, because we're, then we're going to list the factors using the zeros. Remember, that simply means putting them back with their x's. And when you do that, it's going to change the signs. So x plus 3, x plus 1, x minus 4. And that's why we use the brackets for the a, because it's a times all of that stuff. Then what we're going to do is multiply, I cannot make multiply work today, the parentheses. We're going to multiply all of this stuff out in order to get rid of all those parentheses. You're not going to like it, but deal with it. So let's take these first two, multiply them out first. x times x is x squared x times positive 1 is positive 1x. We're just multiplying out, distributing it. Foil if you prefer. Positive 3 times positive x is positive 3x. Positive 3 times positive 1 is positive 3. These two are like terms, so they can be combined. But we're not finished with the multiplication because we still have to multiply that answer times our x minus 4. Right? All I did was multiply the first two parentheses together. Now we have to take that answer times the last thing. 
So we'll start with x squared times x gives us x to the third. x squared times negative 4 is negative 4x squared. Now we'll do the positive 4x. All right, I'm just doing them one at a time. 4x times x is positive 4x squared. Positive 4x times negative 4 is negative 16x's. Done with that one. Now let's take the positive 3. All right. Positive 3 times x is positive 3x's. Positive 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. This x squared and these x's are like terms, so they can be combined. So we're going to get x to the third. And notice that that's negative 4x plus 4x, so those are going to just subtract away. Negative 16x squared plus 3 is negative 13x minus 12. So when we multiply all that stuff together inside here, they get one parenthesis at a time, then that's what it gives us. Okay? <clears throat> so we have our polynomial. Now what I need to do is we're just going to substitute the information that we were given, right? Oops, sorry about that. To black. It says that f of negative 2 equals negative 30, which means that everywhere there was an x, if you replace it with negative 2, and then we're going to replace f of x with that negative 30, and then do the math and solve to get rid of that a. Remember that we added that a in to give us the other part of the polynomial, which I've now lost. Hold on just one minute. Let me find it again. Okay, remember we had f of x equals, we have that, that a, and after we multiplied all those parentheses together, we ended up with that polynomial. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug in, in negative 2 in place of x. Okay, and f of x is going to become negative 30. And then we're just going to multiply it all out and solve. Remember, our unknown is that a right there. We know everything else, so our unknown is a. That's what we'll be solving for. So negative 30, again, because they told us f of x equals negative 30. We don't know what a is. We're going to plug this. Sorry, let me go back. I should have brackets here x to the third is negative 2 to the third power minus 13 times negative 2 minus 12. So all I'm doing is everywhere there was an x, I'm plugging in a negative 2 because they told me that f of x, f of negative 2, so that means negative 2 is our x. Multiplying that out gives me a times negative 2 to the third power is negative 2 times itself 3 times, which makes negative 8. Negative 13 times negative 2 is positive 26 minus 12. Then we simply have to multiply those together. Negative 8. I'm sorry. <laughs> Add all those together. We've done the multiplication. So adding all of those things together. So 8 and 12 gives us negative 20 plus that gives us a 6. All right. And now we can multiply a times 6. And a times 6 is simply 6a. All I need to do is get that a by itself by dividing both sides by the positive 6, which gives me a negative 5. Okay? So f of x So, we knew our f of x was x to the third minus 13x minus 12, right? Oops. But we had that unknown a in front of it. But now that I plugged in the, third, the negative 30 and the negative 2, I know what a is now. So, f of x equals negative 5 
times that polynomial that we got a while ago. So all I have to do is multiply that out. And that will give me my completed answer. I'll type in. Now they already have the f of x part in, so I, all I only have to type in this part. All right? So simply negative 5x to the blah blah blah. Now you know me, can't type all that stuff in. It'll take me too long. So let's just click it so you can see what they put typed in the answer. Now notice I clicked on show the completed problem so it changed the prop numbers. I just wanted you to see that all I did was put in that number part. Okay, now that one's a little odd. Um, just practice it over a few times because it's, it's the oddball of this group. It doesn't seem to fit in, um, so it's going to be the hardest one for you to do. But most of these just involve synthetic division. Okay, so there's your video for the last one. Now there are two more sections in this. They're, they're, they're very related, but keep synthetic division in mind. It's your friend. All right. Thanks.